and welcome to the Nature Journal Connection. I'm your host, John Miralaz. Today, we're gonna to be learning how to draw pictures with numbers. We're gonna take a look at two techniques that are absolute game changers in your ability to record numbers in ways that automatically make a picture that you can look at that summarizes all the data that you've collected. This greatly enhances your ability to think with numbers. Today I'm exploring around in a woodland and I have found checkered lilies. So this little guy right here, this is a checkered lily, beautiful little wildflower. Normally, I, if I find one checkered lily on a hike, I'm really happy. They're really cool. They've got all these great nectaries inside of them, the structures on the inside, the stamens and the pistils, really fun to explore, really fun to draw a diagram and check out. Well, normally you just find one of these, but this little hillside right next to me somehow didn't get the memo that they're supposed to be few and far between. It's covered with more than a hundred checkered lilies. So this is a great opportunity for me to improve my understanding of checkered lilies and the way that they're set up by doing something that scientists call sampling. And what sampling is, is instead of me just taking a look at one checkered lily and drawing a picture of it and making measurements on it, I'm going to be making measurements on a bunch of different checkered lilies. And I'm going to then take that data, and as I collect it, I'm going to record it in a way that makes a picture of the numbers. Let's take a look at how this works. So let's say I get out my ruler, and the first one I measure it, and it is 32 centimeters tall, right? I could just write down on my piece of paper, 32 centimeters tall, the next one was 41 centimeters tall, but eventually you're gonna get this big table, it's just gonna be a big pile of numbers. Our brain can't look at that and kind of go like, ah, I see what's going on. So, first one was 32. Here's how you make your stem leaf plot. I use this all the time in my journal, all right? Draw a vertical line. And down the side, I'm going to write just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, my tens place numbers. Um, I'm going to actually start this one. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right. I'm thinking that most of these are going to be between 20 and 70 centimeters tall. These numbers in this first column right here, those represent the tens place in whatever number I'm getting. So if I measure something and I get 32 centimeters, I'm going to go 30. That 3 is my tens place. I'm just going to write a 2 out to the side of it like that. So this is the stem, and that's the leaf. The next one, let's say I get 34 centimeters on my next one. I'm going to use the same stem and add a new leaf. I'm going to put a 4 right there. Now, the next one, let's say I get 51. I'm going to put a 1 in right there. See what I'm doing? With each measurement, I am adding another number, but I'm adding all the 30s in the 30 column. So if the next one is 47, then 31, then 45, then 27 then 35, and then 42, and then 64, and 51 again, and then 37, and then 38. See what just happened? All those numbers, instead of being a big table, have turned into, look at this, I'm now just going to draw a little box around here, around my 20s, around my 30s, my 40s, my 50s, and 60s. It's just made a bar chart 
to help me immediately see how common each one of these categories is. So you can look at this and immediately you get a sense of the shape of the data. The shape, meaning that there's most are down here at 30, right? But there's not a lot on the lower end, but then there's sort of a long tail going out towards a few that are higher. Different things that you measure will have different shapes. Sometimes it's even, and there's just one peak in the middle, and with an even tail on either side. Sometimes it's skewed out like this. Sometimes you'll find data sets that are a double bump. And you start thinking, like, what's going on with the shape of this data? So the shape of the numbers that you're going to see is going to tell you something about whatever phenomenon you're looking at. And when you collect it this way, it automatically makes a picture of your data. That's the For my second technique, I'm going to create a scatter plot. And this is going to help me see if there's a relationship between how high the checkered lilies are and how many flowers each one has in the inflorescence. And here's how I'm going to do that. It doesn't take a lot of time, but I'm going to make a little L-shaped graph. On this axis is going to be how high the plants are. If I've got height of a plant, I like to put that on my vertical axis just so I can sort of imagine, you know, a plant growing up here and that being the height of the plant. A shorter plant is going to be shorter. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, right? There are, put in 50 right here. This is the height in centimeters. Always a good idea to put um, labels on your axes. And along the bottom is going to be the number of flowers. So I can have, here's one, two flowers, three flowers, four flowers, ah, 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 ah. Number of flowers. And then Let's say I measure something and it is 32 centimeters tall and it has two flowers on it. On this, I would just go up here, 10, 20, 30. So 32 will be at about that height. And it's got two flowers on it, one, two. So here at that height, I'm gonna put in a dot. I don't need to get out a ruler. I don't need to be super precise with this. If this can give me a general ballpark idea of the um, of the relationship between height and the number of flowers, that's, that's, that's all I need. So on the next one, we'll just do one more as an example. Um, it's going to be 40 centimeters tall and there are three flowers. So 40 centimeters tall and three flowers is going to be a dot right in here. And then as I go about exploring on this hillside, I'll just be adding more dots into this. And then I'm going to look and see if there is a pattern that is made by the data that I collected. And then I ask myself, like, you know, what could be some possible explanations for a pattern like that? The final thing is, as I am collecting my data here, I want to be aware of how I am collecting my data my sampling technique. So my sampling technique is I'm going to walk along the trail and any checkered lily that is growing close to the trail, I'm going to bend down and measure it in centimeters and count its flowers. Unless it's in a dense patch of poison oak. I'm not going to get any of the ones that are further off the trail because I see a lot of fresh little shoots popping, poking up here. I don't want to step on any of those little guys. So I'm going to be doing things that I can get from the trail and um, not in poison oak because there's a lot of poison oak out here and I just uh, don't want to get, be, uh, get itchy this afternoon. Let's see what we can learn from doing studies like these. Here's my stem leaf plot of the height of checkered lilies. And a quick glance at that shows me that, yeah, most checkered lilies are between 30 to 50 centimeters tall. 
That's where my big cluster of, of numbers is in there. So right in there, those are my, my typical heights. So if I was to say average, average uh, checkered lily, you know, it could be around 40 or more centimeters tall. But what about the relationship between how high the plant is and how many flowers it is? Remember, I was thinking to myself, I'll bet that the higher the plant is, the more flowers it's going to have on it. But here's what I found. Um, here's the height of the flowers. Here's all the ones with one flower, two flower, three, four, or five flowers. Didn't find any with six. And yeah, certainly a few of the ones that just had one flower on them, they were pretty short. But if you notice, once I get up here to maybe around 40 or 50 centimeters tall, yeah, you can't really, if I said I've got a flower and it's 50 centimeters tall, does it have two, three, or four flowers on it? You wouldn't be able to predict based on this data. So what that says to me is that there isn't really a relationship between the height of the plants, once they kind of are in this range, and how many flowers there are on it. So only if it's a really short plant, yeah, it's probably going to have just one flower on it. But above that, yeah, it'll have some, it'll have maybe three or so flowers on it. You see how looking at these pictures is so different than looking at a big chart of numbers. That's why I like to collect my data using a picture. Your nature journaling challenge this week is to see if you can use sampling to help you move from focus on just one individual to seeing patterns within a population. Can you use number pictures to help you explore and describe the phenomena that you see? With time and practice, these techniques will become another essential tool of your nature journaling process. And until next time, this is your Nature Journal Connection. Doo -doo -doo.